This conference will now be recorded. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks again for the gift of faith, the gift of being able to call upon you and call you Father. We give you thanks uh, just for all of those who, uh, who stand for peace and stand for change. Uh, we ask, Father, that you would continue to help each one of us bring about conversion within our own lives and conversion within society. We entrust you, Father, uh, all those uh, who have lost their lives to COVID or to any sorts of senseless violence, to cancer or any other diseases. We entrust you, Father, all those who are sick, all those who are suffering, all those who have been pushed to the extremities or the extremes of society. We ask that you would just bless this time as we walk in these spiritual rules to help us to be aware in desolation of the types of just the our, our own capacity, which you have given us in our, our natural abilities, but more so that, that you are always with us. We entrust this time to the hands of Mary, our mother, and St. Joseph, our foster father, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Great. Well, tonight we begin with the seventh rule, right? So if the, the fifth rule tells us, right, what we are not to change, and the sixth rule tells us what we are to change, uh, both of those rules consider our uh, deal with our ability to to our actions, right? Both of those reels deal with something that we are to do or not to do. The, the seventh rule is really about a change of perspective in the sense that Ignatius says, let him who is in desolation consider how the Lord has left him in trial in his natural powers, right? And so for Ignatius, the word consider is very important because what he's saying is, is we've already talked about what we can do or can't do in the fifth and sixth rules. Now we want to move to the intellect and, 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 and to actually say, okay, well, from God's perspective, right, that let us consider how the Lord has left him in, in trial in his natural powers in order to resist the different agitations and temptations of the enemy. Since he can with divine help, which always remains to him, though he does not clearly perceive it, because the Lord has taken from him his great favor, great love, and intense grace leaving him, however, uh, grace enough for eternal salvation. So very simply, the rule is saying is that if we move, if we allow ourselves to look at the circumstances we find ourselves in from the perspective of the Father, the Father remains to, present to us, giving us sufficient grace to be able to stand against the desolation, right? I don't know if you, you have a child who might sometimes simply say, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you say to the child, well, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm here to help you. Like, I want to help you to be able to do this, right? But the, our natural inclination is to say, I can't. I don't want to. I, I, I can't stand against this, right? And, and, and Ignatius is saying that like a child, right, that if we consider desolation only from our point of view, only from from our, within ourselves, all we can say is, I can't. But if we consider, if we actually see desolation as something that God permits, right? So if God permits it, it means God is still present. So if God permits it, it also means God is still giving us the grace to be able to resist and to, to say, I can, because of him who strengthens me, because of him who, who bestows upon me these graces. So, just that's the, that's the just the high the high view of the sixth of the seventh rule. So where do we begin? Right. Well, we begin in this rule by just simply reminding ourselves that that this is a trial, right? This is not something that is enjoyable, right? I, I think of going to the gym, right, as a trial. Every single time I go to the gym. Uh, now, if you like going to the gym, right, that may not be a trial for you, right? Other people thought organic chemistry was a trial. And I thought to myself, this is the greatest gift that God has given to mankind, the ability to study organic chemistry. And I loved it, right? That wasn't a trial for me, right? But just like, so, so this is a trial. It's something the Lord permits to happen in our lives. 
and that doesn't, and, and he hasn't left us, right? And that um, we want to remember, right, that, that so often the way that we respond to things are based upon our emotions. The way that we respond to, to circumstances and situations, whether or not we acknowledge our emotions, we act out of our emotions, right? So if you say, Father, I never get angry, I will look at you and I will smile and I say, then you're not human. Um, because the reality is, is that all of us act out of our emotions, whether or not we acknowledge them. And Ignatius is trying to say that, that in this time of desolation, right? Because we remember that the enemy whispers these lies and accusations to us. He says to us, you're not good enough. You're not going to achieve this. You might as well just quit, right? This has become a burden. Um, uh, you know, that, that there's an emptiness here. Like the Lord has left you. You're all alone. Give up, right? And if you and I sit in the emotion of it, if we sit in the discouragement, if we sit in the frustration, all we're going to be able to do is just do exactly what is, what's being told to us, which is give up, which is walk away. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, right? Maybe you're someone who says, well, Father, I keep starting in the spiritual life and I get so far and then I get stuck. Well, it might be because we get so far and we start to experience spiritual desolation where all of a sudden we're like, like this is becoming tiresome. Like it just doesn't feel the way that it used to feel. I don't understand why I'm not enjoying mass the way I used to, or I'm not enjoying prayer the way I used to. And the question I would pose is, well, how did you respond? Because if I'm doing this from the standpoint of the emotions, right? I'm, I'm going to eventually give up. And then I'll be moved again to start again some time later, and I'll start again, and it'll be exciting. And But eventually I'll get to a place again where I'm going to hear this discouragement. I'm going to hear this, this desolation speaking to me. And I'm going to pull away. And so Ignatius says, well, now we have to consider, we have to think, okay, well, the Lord is the one who's permitted this. And because the Lord has permitted this, right? And that it, this is not pointless. There's meaning that's here. The Lord is inviting me. He's giving me an opportunity to walk with him in a new way, to walk with him um, with greater trust than I had before, like we talked about in the sixth and the fifth rule. But he wants me in this, in this rule really to look at it from the standpoint of that God is still here. He hasn't left me in this trial. I'm not alone. And if I can stand against this trial here, and like, let's say I, today I can stand against it, tomorrow I fall, but I get up again and I stand against it. Maybe throughout the day, it's like I'm making these small little steps to, to say, you know, like the Lord is here. I don't have to give into this temptation. I'm going to spend those extra few minutes in prayer. I am going to still read that scripture because the Lord is going to give me the grace to. That's, that's the beauty of it, right? And the Lord wants us to remember that he is there with us, right? That the Lord is at work in our lives, even now in the midst of the desolation, in the midst of those feelings where like, I can't praise the Lord. I have nothing to share with God. My heart feels cold towards him. The Lord feels far away from me. Even there in that place, right? The Lord is still at work in our lives. He's permitting this. And while there's a, a, a true pain, there's a real pain in spiritual desolation, and it may not go away right away, as you and I consider that the God is here, our, our, our hearts are strengthened. Our resolve is strengthened because we recognize the Father hasn't left us. The Father's walking with us. Now, again, we want to remember, right, that in desolation, and Ignatius goes over desolation again and again, right? It's that sense of God has been stripped away, our ability to sense him, our awareness of God's presence, right? That we're utterly unable to overcome sin. And that all of our strength, even the ability to praise God, simply seems to be a burden, right? All of these things happen in our lives, and they happen again and again, and they'll happen in seasons, in different seasons. And when those things happen, if we, if we recognize that this is the enemy trying to get us to forget what God has done for you and for me, then all we're going to, rec all we're going to experience is this burden. Like prayers become a burden. Living the virtuous life is a burden. I might as well give in to temptation. I might as well give in to the sin because at least I'll feel something. Right? And we forget how the Lord has been faithful. We forget how the Lord has, has, has loved us and has supported us and has come through in every difficult position 
and situation we find ourselves when we let him. And that's all part of it. Um, like that's all part of what the enemy is trying to do in desolation. He's trying to get us to forgive. And so the Lord has left us in these times of trial in our natural powers, right? And our natural powers consist of the ability to choose, the powers of the will, the powers of the intellect to reason, and the powers of the imagination, right? To pull, call upon the memory, to call upon what God has done for us in our past. And so he leaves us with these three faculties to really to stand against, to stand against us, right? So the first thing that we have is our ability to choose. You and I can will something still, right? I don't have to, to believe that, um, uh, that the outcome is predestined. I don't have to believe that the out predetermined, right? I don't have to be to believe that the outcome of this time of desolation is predetermined that I'm going to end as a failure because I still have the freedom to choose. The other thing is, is I have the freedom to reason and to, to reason and to say, wait a second, like the Lord is the Lord. And even here he is, he is still present. So I am not alone here. And I have the ability to call upon the imagination to recall those memories, those times when God has demonstrated his fidelity to me, those times when he has demonstrated his power, right? Now, all of those may not bring back the feeling of God's presence, and that's okay, or the sense of God, or really our, our deep desire um, to respond to the Lord. But the very fact that we ask the Lord for help and that we allow him to walk with us with our will we allow him to walk in our imagination. We allow him to walk in our reason and to be with us, right? He is the one who's going to help us to do all of this. We don't do this on our own. And so we go on, right? And just again, right, in order to resist the different agitations and temptations of the enemy. So we've, we've said that, right? That's what this is for. Since he can with the divine help, which always remains to him, right? And this is a really important piece, right? God's help is always there. It never leaves. I'm going to say that again. If his help is always available to you and to me. He never leaves us. We may not see it. We may not taste it. We may not sense it. And this is where the will and the intellect are very important because the intellect says God is faithful because he, he cannot deceive. And then the will chooses to believe that God is faithful. And it chooses to, to say, I can resist this, 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 this temptation to not pray. I can resist this temptation to give in to an earthly pleasure. I can resist this temptation to give up hope because God is faithful. Right, Jesus in the, in the Gospel of John says, I am with you till the end of the age, right? Well, if Jesus is with us to the end of the age, that means that there's no point in time when Jesus is not with us. Otherwise, he wouldn't be God because his word wouldn't be true. And, and we go on to read, right, that since he can with divine help, which remains always with him, it gives us great confidence and great courage to know that we're not alone in these time of this time of difficulty that we're not alone in this time. And so our intellect says, listen, scripture tells us this. The saints' lives witness to this, right? St. Paul says, you know, he talks about when he, he's, he's being, uh, when he's experiencing this, this profound uh, suffering, this profound cross, and he goes to the thorn in the flesh, and he goes to God, and three times he goes to him, and the Lord says to St. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, right? And so he says the same thing to us. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is enough. Trust in my grace. Lean into my grace. Lean into my strength, not your own. Because it's in his strength, in his grace, that you and I are able to choose love, to choose virtue, and to choose to stand against, to stand against the temptation. And the beautiful thing is that as we do this, right, our will is strengthened. We grow in our courage and our confidence to say, you know what, I can say no to the temptation, right? Maybe normally I would have given into it 
you know, after the first time it was presented to me. And this time it took the enemy five times to present it to my imagination before I gave in to the temptation. You know, maybe I went to the refrigerator three times before I took out the piece of cheesecake, right? It just depends, right? It's like not once, but I said, no, I don't want the piece of cheesecake tonight. I'm good. You know, but then, you know, I have a bad conversation. I'm walking into the, the kitchen again and there's the refrigerator. It's looking at me. It says, I have something for you. It's like, no, you stay away from me. Go away. And I leave the kitchen, right? Well, now it's time for me to go to bed and I got to walk through the kitchen, but now I'm tired. I'm tired. I had a long conversation on the phone. I walk into the kitchen. Well, there's the refrigerator. And I just hear it whispering. I have something. And this time I give in. But you know what? The first two times I said no when I normally would have said yes. And instead of getting really upset with myself, I get to look at my story and I get to say, you know what? I said no two, uh, two times tonight, which is two times more than usual. Well, maybe tomorrow night I can say no every time. Because I begin to grow in confidence as I resist the temptation, as I resist the spiritual discouragement, as I resist the desolation. And, and this is the beauty of it, right? I think sometimes we expect ourselves to be at the end of the journey before we even started, right? Like you go to the gym and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna put on 285 pounds. I'm gonna be amazing. And you know, it's like, I, I haven't been to the gym since I was in high school. No, it's not true, since I was in seminary, right? There's no way I could put on 200. I mean, I could put on 285 pounds, but like nothing would move. Um, but that's just the idea, right? It's like, no, like I'm not gonna be there. I'm going to start where I'm going to start, which if I'm honest with myself, is right where I'm at right now. It's not at the end of the journey. And so often you and I want to be at the end of the journey before we even begin. And so we're so impatient with ourselves. We expect ourselves to be able to achieve and accomplish what the saints did without having all of the training and all of the growth and all of the seasons of desolation that the saints have had. Right. So again, mercy is very important here. So let him who is in desolation, and we've all been there, consider how the Lord has left him in this time of trial in his natural powers, right? So again, we're just remembering, like, God has allowed me to be here. And if my father's allowed me to be here, it means that he's going to give me the grace, even though I don't feel him or sense him, to be able to choose with my will and my intellect and my imagination. Uh, to remember his fidelity to me and to walk in that fidelity, right? Those are the natural powers, the will, the intellect, the imagination, which is the memory. And he gives me these powers so that I can resist the different agitations and temptations, right? He gives me this power so that I can, I can walk past the refrigerator. I can turn off the TV. I can close down Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook or TikTok or whatever it is, but I can turn it off and I can go say my prayers or I can, I can go to my room, even though I may not feel like it, I say yes to the one who has promised to be with me forever, right? Because the Lord has taken from him his great fervor, his great love, his intense grace, leaving him grace enough for eternal salvation, right? So while I may not feel all that excitement about it, I'm not alone in it. I'm not abandoned in it. I'm not, I'm not forgotten in it. The Lord is asking me now though to trust and to act out of love for him, not for the feelings, not for what I get from it, but for his sake. And, and this is the beauty, right? God designs the human person toward freedom, right? He designs us to seek freedom from the desolation to cooperate with the natural and the supernatural graces that we have. And that's why our little resistances are so important. You know, and um, now there's something that's really important to say, right? If you struggle with addiction uh, or you struggle, or there's like a, an irregularity going on in your life at the moment, like you're exceptionally tired, right? If like, if you're in a place where you're ex emotionally exhausted or exceptionally tired, your ability to, 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 to live the seventh rule is, is almost impossible, 
because you're not in a space in a place of, of balance in, in your life, in your physiological and emotional life, right? Not, we're not because remember the rules apply to the spiritual life. So if we're in a place where we're out of balance, either emotionally or physically exhausted, um, it becomes incredibly easy for us to give in to any spiritual desolation because really we don't have the the the, the other components, the other faculties, our, our other faculties aren't able to facilitate or cooperate with the grace because they've been so depleted. And so what we want to make sure is that we, we, we resolve those things, right? So some of those things require counseling. Some of those require um, some sort of anonymous group to help us with that, right? But a lot of it requires us just to make sure we're getting the sleep and doing the self-care that we need to do, right? St. Saint, uh, Saint Thomas of Aquinas, when he talks about you know anxiety, he'll say, you know, when's the last time you took a hot bath? When's the last time you had a good, a good, enjoyable drink, right? Not to the point of overindulgence, but when's the last time you had a good drink? Just to enjoy God's creation. When's the last time you took a walk in nature, right? So there's very natural things that the saints will recommend to us to help us get into a place where our, 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 our emotional and our psychological and our physiological uh, aspects of our humanity are, are regulated again in a healthy way. But Ignatius is just clear too, right? If you're not, if you don't, if you're exhausted, you you don't have the will to say no. If you're emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted, right? You just don't have the will to say no, um, because your will draws upon your emotional, psychological, and physical strength. It draws upon your very humanity, and. You know, and and you know, it's uh, it's just something to keep in mind, right? Because I think sometimes we do ourselves a great disservice by getting really angry with ourselves for for choosing poorly. But we fail to realize that the reasons, oftentimes, that we've chosen poorly is because we're exhausted, right? Even the saints will say they'll say, you know, in the morning, the morning is the best time to practice the life of virtue. Because you're 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 refreshed, you you haven't in, engaged in all these difficult things, right? It's the easiest time to do that. By the late afternoon and the evening, the saints all say that virtue is now incredibly difficult to practice because we're exhausted. We've depleted our natural stores of uh, our natural stores, and we rely on divine grace to help support us there. But but our emotionally and physiologically, physically and spirit and um, psychologically we could we could be exhausted so we just want to keep that all in mind right because this is this is all this is it's it's not like the soul is totally separate from the body no like they all they all work together they all work together and so we just want to remember right like and we, so we just want to recall right in this time right the seventh rule basically says two things to us it says the reality is is that i can't of my own will say no to these things but because God permits this time of desolation, he gives me the grace to say that I can with his help. Right? Because God permits this, I know that he's present to me and that he gives me the grace and the ability with his help to resist the desolation. It's not because I'm good. It's not because I'm strong. It's not because I'm powerful. It's because God is helping me to cooperate with the natural graces he's given me to resist desolation. The only reason I say no is because God has helped me to say no. And that's so important because it keeps us humble. The second thing is, is the enemy wants us to forget how God has been faithful. He wants us to forget how the Lord has walked with us on this journey thus far, how we've had these little victories because we keep saying, Lord, I trust in you. And God says, no, remember them. Remember, call to mind those things of the past where I have shown you my fidelity, where I have shown you my strength and my grace. Remember, think of the Lion King, right? Like where it's like, you know, James Earl Jones is like, Simba. You have forgotten, like, remember, right? And he sees 
he sees his father Mufasa up there and uh, because he forgot his identity right as the son of the king right it's a great scene for 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 that right but he forgets his identity as the son of the king and 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 we forget our identity as the son of the father and and God's like remember Ignatius is saying to us remember remember who you are you're the father's daughter you're the father's son and because you're the father's daughter because you're the father's son grace is given the father is there the father is faithful so god is here god is faithful he's giving us the grace and like that trainer like that coach who keeps saying to you and to me okay you can do one more rep you can give it a little bit more come on keep pushing keep saying yes to me and saying no to the temptation he stands right beside there cheering us on asking us to use our natural faculties our natural powers of the intellect of the will and of the imagination to say no to the lies and the accusations of desolation and to say yes to the truth that God is good and God is faithful and he is with us. And little by little, as we have these small victories, we grow in our confidence of the power and the love of God to stand against desolation. So that every time that it happens, it gets easier and easier to say, no, this is not of God. I, I resist this and I choose the Lord. So this is the seventh rule. Father Burke, I don't know, maybe you have some great examples that come to mind for you or uh, some, some good stories or anecdotes. I'd be happy to, to share some. Yeah, it's a great explanation. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, several things were going on in my mind as you were, you were sharing. Um, one was identity. You know, the... I'm working with my niece, trying to get my my book done that I've been working on about three years. <laughs> but it's it about my own story, and as as we're looking at it, we realize I realized that when I finally believed that I was that beloved son, it it changed everything, and I started to see things and see my own history even differently, and it helped help me to trust in God as you said we have a good good father who loves us not because we're good but because he's good and so I was began to think how do we grow in that kind of faith to know who we are and to trust that God has always been there and always will be um, one is diving into the scriptures but another practical exercise I think is to look back at your life and see where you know, those moments when you felt like, wait, God, you abandoned me, and then see how God brought you through that difficult time. I've had several times in my life where I thought, where are you, God? You know, and then, you know, it often takes time. But now when I look back on it, I thought, wow, like the footprints in the sand, gosh, you were carrying me, Lord. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, so identity, faith, the, the human formation that your Father Steve was talking about, we, as we work with seminarians, we say that grace builds on nature. And so really taking care of our, our bodies through sleep, exercise, um, diet, that those natural uh, ways of, of resisting temptation so that when God's grace comes in, it gives us amazing strength that's why we're doing those exercise classes <laughs> there's times when i feel like what am i doing i i can't do this uh, um, but through practice you know you know i can get through those difficult moments physically and then also spiritually somebody mentioned on facebook other steve while you were talking uh, she said she had taken a a similar course to this on the rules of discernment and what she learned through the whole thing was to have patience and to wait on God. God is faithful. 
to not make any major decisions in desolation, which, yeah, that's another. That's the eighth rule. That's Monday. Yeah. Getting ahead exactly. of us. Exactly. Um, so you can see all, how all of these rules tie together. Um, but ultimately that God is faithful. So in my own life, I've shared some of these stories before, but there's there's actually several times when I felt like, you know, Lord, one was the death of my mother. The death of my father was very different just a year and a half ago. I really, I was in a different place. My dad was in a different place. Uh, but when my mom died, my faith was struggling. I was first year seminarian. Uh, her faith was struggling. And so I went through a very difficult time, actually a couple of years of, you know, while I'm in the seminary, you know, Lord, give me the grace. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that uh, I'm on the right track. And little by little, he did. Uh, and, it, and it took sometimes just as Father Steve was saying, okay, Lord, let me take the next step. Let me put one foot in front of the other. That's about all I've got today. And okay, next day, let me put the next foot forward. And little by little, the Lord started showing me that, yeah, I'm with you. And together we can get through this. The devil wants to make us feel like we're alone, that God has abandoned you. So you might as well abandon him. Stop praying. Um, jump out of the ship that I call the church, you know, abandon the church. The devil knows how, how valuable the church is in leading us to salvation. And one of the ways, you know, the scandal that we went through with the, the priestly scandal, what the evil one wanted us to do was to jump ship and try to do this on our own. And, uh, and so this rule helps us to say, you know, Lord, I know, I know you're here, even though things seem difficult, things, things may seem bleak, but I trust that you're here, even if I can't see you. Uh, and that's where the scriptures come in so uh, greatly. The one that Father Steve uh, mentioned, you know, I, I'll be with you until the end of the age. Just meditate on that alone, that promise. Jesus keeps his promises. He's the word of God. Uh, when he speaks, things happen. What he speaks, he fulfills. And, uh, and so it's an objective reality. And subjectively, we may not sense God. We may feel like, oh, where are you? Objectively, he, he's there. And, and sometimes it takes something like this, maybe a class like this, having friends support you to say, you can go on. Uh, you're, you're not alone. So those are uh, some of my reflections uh, I wanted to share tonight. And, Anybody has any comments or questions before we go into prayer? Okay, so someone's uh, saying uh, when somebody's in clinical depression, a change in diet, sleeping patterns, and the use of antidepressant medication will increase energy. Depression can often come from lethargy, hopelessness, and helplessness. Antidepressant medication does not make one happy, it makes one more energized. So it's not the solution, but an important aspect of the solution. Yeah. So there are some very natural ways, uh, you know, sleeping um, and also some medication that can help people in that. We know that uh, during this time of pandemic, uh, time of quarantine, there, there can be some big struggles and uh, the Lord, I believe, is the, the greatest answer to these things. Uh, yeah, Mary, Jesus says, I'm with you always, holding you in my arms. And then some, somebody else, even perfect strangers I encountered would say something that would significantly help me. Looking back, I can totally see that. Yeah, so that sense of looking back at, at our history be a good exercise for you to do before our, our next class on Monday. Look, do kind of a review of your life and look and see how God has brought you through difficult times. 
So, Steve? I do want to say that, you know, one of the things that we do have to, it takes time to sometimes to discern between desolation uh, and depression. Um, they can look very similar at times in the spiritual life. And so it, it, it's something that we want to be attentive to. And, you know, if you found yourself in a place of this heaviness for a long period of time, it might not be spiritual desolation. It might actually be a psychological depression. Um, so it's just something I want everyone to keep in mind uh, because that is something that has to be discerned. I've met some seminarians who are just like, Father, like everything's heavy, everything's difficult. It's just like, this is just a time, it's just a time of purification. It's a time for me to endure, right? And so we're resisting it. We're standing against it. We're employing the, the rules for discernment of spirits. And we don't see any headway or progress to be made. And so we make the judgment. It's like, well, let's go talk to a counselor. Let's go talk to a therapist about it because this doesn't seem spiritual. It actually seems very much rooted in something other and uh, something just physiological uh, or emotional. And you know, a number of times it is. And the counseling and then the medicine, uh, as Jim pointed out, becomes very, very helpful. Uh, very, very helpful as a way of creating a foundation upon which now we can begin to do the spiritual work that needs to be there. So um, it's just something that we need to, we want to be attentive to because we can confuse desolation and depression easily in the spiritual life, especially if we have a, a tendency to spiritualize uh, our own experiences of life. And by that, I mean, we give a spiritual meaning to everything that happens. Um, so that's just something I want just to keep in mind. Yeah, thanks, Sharon. I was thinking back to times of exhaustion, usually as a caregiver of a daughter with special needs. I might not feel him in those times, but I know he is there. Yeah, amen. And that's what God wants to continue as Father Steve was saying, as we continue to make good decisions and um, to try to stay living in his grace, the Lord, you know, affirms us in that to say, yes, I'm with you. Keep keep making those decisions. Uh, the opposite is true, too. When we make poor decisions and we especially when we choose sin, that's when we start to get in, in habits of sin. Um, and it just gets easier and easier to sin and to, as we kind of move away from God, um, sometimes it's a, it's a slow fade and all of a sudden, how did I get here? And so virtue and, and good decision making is, is key in this. So shall we move into prayer? We've got about 20 minutes of prayer and some more discussion. I was led to uh, Hebrews chapter 13 uh, during our discussion here, uh, verses 1 through 8. So if you like to follow along, you can, but I just encourage you just to close your eyes, listen to the Word of God. And that's why digging into the Word of God is, uh, is one of the ways that God will fortify you and give you the strength during these difficult times. So let's pay attention to our, our breathing. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Let's let go of some of the difficult things we experience today. Some of the things that we've watched on television or heard in the news. Let's hand those to the Lord and ask the Lord to help us to be present to this moment. Come, Holy Spirit, guide this time of prayer. Help us to be totally focused on you and aware how you're moving in our hearts. So once again, as you listen to these words, just pay attention to what gets stirred up inside. Not trying to fix ourselves, just trying to let the Lord speak to us. Love your fellow Christians always. Do not neglect to show hospitality, for by that means some have entertained angels without knowing it. Be as mindful of prisoners as if you were sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you may yet suffer as they do. 
Let marriage be honored in every way, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Do not love money, but be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never desert you, nor will I forsake you. Thus, we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider how their lives ended and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So before the second time through, just pay attention to what might have jumped out the first time reading through it. Love your fellow Christians always. Do not neglect to show hospitality, for by that means some have entertained angels without knowing it. Be as mindful of prisoners as if you were sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you may yet suffer as they do. Let marriage be honored in every way, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Do not love money, but be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never desert you, nor will I forsake you. Thus we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider how their lives ended and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's take a a minute or two to just be aware, Holy Spirit, what's being stirred in my heart? What's underneath that? What, what are you trying to reveal to me through the scripture? Relate that to God. So speak to God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What's being stirred up inside of you? Don't filter it or judge it. Just speak to God out of what you're experiencing. Lord, I'm experiencing peace because, or Lord, I'm feeling distressed because. Let's relate to the Lord.
going to spend a couple moments in receiving from the Lord. Let the Lord speak to your heart. How does he respond to what you've just shared with him? How does the Lord gaze upon you? What does he want you to know? After listening to the Lord, what is your response to him? What is the Lord calling you to do, to say, to respond? What's being stirred in your heart after hearing from him? As we bring this time of prayer to a close, we, we say together, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anybody like to share, either in writing or if you're on GoToMeeting, you could even say it audibly if it's easier to say it. Mary, Jesus says, because I'm in love with you, I will never leave you. I'm always there. Thank you. 
very grateful to God for these gifts. I hope I can express that thanks by the way I live. Looking back, all the people, childhood teachers, priests, sisters, good friends, have given so much to me. Thank you. Anybody else want to share what was being stirred up in prayer? I can share from, from me while you're thinking and writing. Uh, the words that jumped out at me were the last ones. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I just had this image of like this rock you know of all the things that are changing uh especially what we've experienced in the last three months like the lord telling me i'm not moving haven't and will not and you can you can yoke yourself to me there was just this beautiful like this calming presence um amidst the chaos that have, that's been swirling around us recently somebody shared i will never i will never desert you is what stood out to her comforting words and of course as this relates to rule number seven you know i will never leave you nor forsake you i think those words meditating on those words alone will help you with this rule. As soon as you think God has abandoned you or that, that thought comes in your mind, oh yeah, Hebrews 13, five, and it's also at the end of uh, the Gospel of Matthew, you're saying, Matthew 28, I believe. Hmm. Christine shares it mentor of marriage as I'm dealing with my husband entering his final time on earth I will never leave you hmm. Hmm. thank you for sharing that be very personal Yeah, just at the end of the Great Commission, another place you can go to, Matthew 28, uh, 20, after he tells them to go and make disciples, he says, teach them to carry out everything I've commanded you and know that I am with you always until the end of the world. So Matthew 28, verse 20, and Hebrews 13, 5 are two great verses to meditate upon. Yeah, Diana was just saying that Matthew 28, 20, a verse that's helped me many times. I heard about honoring marriage and my husband walked in and said, we have to hire someone. We can't keep up with work. I talked to God and said, who can help? The name came to me. I immediately texted his mom. She said, yes, he needs a job. Husband came down from the shower and I said, I found someone that fast. I just finished breathing and praising. <laughs> so God answering prayers on the spot. God is good. Father Steve, you have any any comments uh, while we wind down here? Just just that reminder, like when you feel that the the, the from the very first uh, the prologue of the Gospel of John, so that where um, the light entered into the world and the darkness did not overcome it. And so just like the seventh rule is really about that recognition, right? That, that whether or not we sense the Lord, darkness cannot overcome him. Darkness does not overcome God. And there is a great invitation, there's a great temptation. Well, so one, there's a great temptation for us to think that the enemy is stronger than, than the power and the love of God. And the seventh rule helps us again to say no. Like the Lord is the one who permitted this. The enemy doesn't have it, can't do anything, right? 
when you read the book of Job, God is the one who permits it so that he could he can for some some greater good, right? We may not we may not understand it at the time, and we may not understand it until we're with the Lord forever and eternity, but the Lord permits these things for some greater good. Um, that's what Romans 8 28 reminds us of. And so let us just just really just trust in God. Trust in what the Lord is doing, right? So if you find yourself in a place of discouragement, if you find yourself in this place of spiritual desolation, remember that the Lord has permitted it because he is not abandoning you, but he's just withdrawing. Um, uh, he's just withdrawing what you, our ability to sense his presence. Um, the other thing I like to think of sometimes is, have you ever walked from a really, really dark room into the sun and how you're almost blinded by the light of the sun? Well, the sun is certainly still shining, even though you can't see anything. Uh, but it's because of that our senses are overwhelmed uh, in that moment. And sometimes too, right, that the Lord draws closer to us, overwhelming the senses that we can't, uh, that we can't really sense or see him. Um, but that's just a couple of things that I would just, just say about the seventh rule and remembering that the Lord is here. He's in our midst. We're not alone. And, and we can trust him. He is trustworthy. Someone shared here that uh, they're experiencing such incredible peace. Uh, the verse that stuck out to her was, I'm with you till the end of the age. Um, and then Diana, you mentioned about staying in the word. There's so many promises from God to keep us strong and to be able to know when the enemy is lying to us. Yeah. And so, the enemy always wants to attack our identity. You know, so God the Father says, you're my beloved child. The enemy is going to want to lie to you and say, that's false. Uh, you're, remember that sin that you committed, that's unforgivable. God can't love you, all of those lies. So it's always trying to separate us from God. So yeah, stay in the word of God, especially the gospels. You know, listen to the words of Jesus, who is the word of God himself, and uh, he'll give you, give you peace. Jesus is unchangeable, always there with me. Amen. I think that's a good place to, to end. Great. Well, let's close in prayer. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Father, we amen. thank you for this evening. We thank you for these rules that you are faithful. And whether or not we can sense you, you are there. You are with us. Grant us the courage and the strength, the perseverance and the fortitude that we need to continue to resist the spiritual desolation in our lives and to claim the spiritual consolation to abide in it and to live forth from it. May every grace and blessing be given this night to all who are listening or who will listen uh, to our spiritual conferences. Strengthen them in a life of grace and bless them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.